Uh, so first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, Hong for the very nice invitation. So it's my uh, great pleasure to give a talk in this uh, uh, PDE seminar. So today I'm going to talk about uh, sobre estimates for a fraction of PDEs. So we're going, going to uh, consider equations which uh, has operators uh, fractional in uh, time or fractional in the, in the space variable. So, uh, so most of my uh, talk today will be uh, based on uh, joint work with uh, uh, Professor Duyong King from uh, Korea University and also my uh, current PhD student, uh, Yan Se Liu at Brown University. So let me uh, first give you the, the motivation and also uh, introduce the two methods uh, which we are going to use uh, in, the, in the proofs. Uh, so this is the, the classical uh, cardinal zeeman uh, estimate. So let's consider this uh, 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 non divergence for uh, equation uh, second order uh, aij uh, diju plus uh, bi diu plus cu is equal to uh, a given function f. Uh, so here we impose this uh, uh, elliptic condition. So aij kci uh, kcj is bounded from uh, below and above. Uh, and uh, let's assume that the lower the coefficients uh, b and c are bounded and c is non negative. Uh, then we have the the, the classical cardinal Zygmunt estimate provided that uh, the, the leading coefficients are sufficiently uh, regular. For example, uh, AIJ are uniform, uniformly uh, continuous. Uh, so this is the, the classical uh, cardinal Zygmunt estimate. So you can estimate the, the ALP norm of the Hessian of U by the ALP norm of uh, uh, F, uh, which is the Kimmel function. Uh, so similar uh, estimates also uh, hold for uh, parabolic equations as well as uh, divergence form equations. So you can replace this operator by a uh, divergence form uh, operator. Okay. Uh, so, so I mentioned that we need certain regularity of the, the coefficients uh, in the previous uh, slide. So there's a very important class of uh, coefficients which is uh, uh, called the VMO coefficients, uh, which means that uh, it has the coefficients have uh, vanishing mean oscillation. So I think uh, uh, for equations with uh, vanishing mean oscillations, uh, the first uh, work in this direction is by uh, Cherenza, uh, Frasca, and uh, Rongo in uh, 1991 and 1993. So in these two papers, they obtained uh, W2P estimates for uh, elliptic equations in non divergence form with uh, bounded and uh, vanishing mean oscillation coefficients for non divergence form equations. And later uh, in 96, uh, DeFazio uh, extended this result to uh, divergence form equations, uh, but still with uh, bounded mean oscillation coefficients. And these two uh, results are for elliptic equations. And later, uh, Bramanti and uh, uh, Saruti in 93 uh, obtained uh, similar results for uh, uh, non divergence from parabolic equations with the bounded, mean, um, bounded managing mean oscillation coefficients. So, in all this work, uh, the, the idea of the proof is to use uh, Cardinal Zygmunt uh, theorem. And also uh, commentator theorem due to Kaufman, uh, Rochberg, and Lees. So uh, I mentioned the vanishing mean oscillation. So what is the VMO? So VMO means that if you uh, consider this uh, uh, oscillation, L1 oscillation of F. So this is F minus the average of F, and then you take the average in the in the in the same uh, small ball, and then let's say the radius of 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 ball uh, goes to zero, then this oscillation should go to zero. So then we say that uh, the function is, uh, has vanishing mean oscillation. Uh, so that's great. So we have this result, but uh, there's, a, there's a drawback of the, the method. So because the, the method, method re, uh, relies on the, the regularity of the corresponding uh, fundamental solutions. And uh, if the, the coefficients are not so smooth, then we cannot uh, apply this method. So uh, the first method uh, I want to uh, uh, discuss today is uh, so-called uh, mean oscillation method. So uh, 
So Kirov in 2005 uh, used this method to obtain uh, W12P estimate for uh, both divergence and non-divergence from uh, parabolic equations with, uh, 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 with coefficients AIJ, which are only uh, VM wall with respect to the X variable. So in the, in the T variable, it can be just a measurable. So you can have jump discontinuity in the in time direction, but uh, uh, the coefficients uh, have vanishing mean oscillation in the X direction. So this is an improvement of the, the, uh, the previous result I mentioned by Bramanti and Soluti because in their paper, uh, they require the coefficients to uh, have vanishing mean oscillation in both T and X. And in the result by Kirov, uh, the coefficients are only required to be uh, uh, VMO in the X variable. Okay, so, and then uh, two years later, uh, he obtained a, a mixed, uh, mixed norm estimate. Uh, so first I take the LP norm in X and then take the uh, LQ norm in T. So Q is greater than equal to P. And sometimes uh, in the literature, this is also called a maximum regularity estimate. So what is the, the idea of uh, his proof? So uh, the idea is to uh, prove a point-wise estimate for shaft functions of, uh, of the U in the divergence case, and also uh, the Hessian D square U in the non-divergence case. So we can obtain certain uh, uh, point-wise uh, estimate. And then uh, we can apply the, uh, the Feynman standard theorem uh, on shaft functions and also hard data toward maximum function theorem uh, for um, maximum function. So the first inequality I wrote below is the, the hard to uh, maximum function. So we can control the, the maximum function of F in the LP space by the, the, the uh, LP norm of uh, F itself. So the second inequality is uh, the, the Friedman stand uh, theorem. So we can control the LP norm of F by, uh, in, in, uh, by some constant times the LP norm of its uh, sharp function. Uh, so the second inequality looks amazing because uh, uh, this is just oscillation, right? So you can, can control the, the function by its oscillation. And this is certainly not true. For example, F is, uh, is constant, but because when F is constant, the left-hand side is infinity and the right side is equal to zero. So we need to uh, impose some condition. For example, we need to impose uh, F to be in your P and this is true, okay? So this is, uh, the Friedman stand theorem uh, on shaft functions. All right, so the, the idea uh, behind this uh, is in some sense, the proof is uh, uh, based on certain uh, inter interpolation between a C2 alpha estimate and W22 estimate. And then to deal with the VMO coefficients, uh, we use perturbation algorithm. Okay, so this is the, the idea of the uh, Kirov's proof. So there, there are many subsequent work. Uh, let me just mention uh, some recent ones. Uh, so with, uh, with my uh, previous uh, leading student, uh, Garati, we studied higher order uh, elliptic and parabolic equations on house space or domains uh, with uh, very general boundary conditions, which is called the uh, uh, Agmon -Dogli, uh, Douglas Nuremberg type uh, boundary conditions. So in the literature, this is also called uh, Rapontisky uh, Shapiro uh, boundary conditions. So under this condition, we can obtain a uh, 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 solid estimate for uh, higher order uh, elliptic and parabolic equations. And uh, uh, with uh, with the Duyong uh, came in uh, 2018, we obtained weighted and mixed norm uh, estimate for uh, for several type of uh, linear equations with uh, with AP weights. And I'm going to explain AP weights uh, a bit later. And then uh, by using extrapolation uh, theorem, uh, we can remove the condition Q is greater than or equal to P in the uh, LQP estimate. So uh, if you still remember in the result by Kirov in 2007, uh, he needs to assume that uh, Q is greater than or equal to P. So with uh, uh, ex extrapolation theorem, we can remove this condition. So now we do we, we do not need this condition anymore. Okay, and okay. So 
a few years ago with, uh, with Nikolai Krylov, uh, we obtained a weighted and mixed norm estimate for uh, fully nonlinear uh, equations, elliptic and parabolic equations. So in the whole space, half space, uh, and the uh, relaxed uh, complexity condition. So for fully nonlinear equations, we know that uh, a certain complexity condition is needed. And in that paper, we can uh, uh, relax the, this complexity condition. All right, so, so this is the, the method, the first method I want to talk about. So the second method is uh, so-called uh, level set uh, method. So I think that the first uh, uh, paper used this method is by Cafari and uh, Perel in uh, 1998. And in, the, in that paper, uh, they proved uh, W1P estimate for linear and quasi-linear elliptic equations uh, in divergence form uh, with continuous groupings. And they also consider uh, uh, some elliptic homogenization problem. So what is the, the level set argument? So the idea is to first get the, the Lipschitz estimate for uh, weak solutions to equation with the constant groupings. So this is the, uh, the estimate. So you can control the, the Lipschitz norm by the L2 norm of uh, uh, gradient U. Okay. Then they compare the solution to uh, this equation with a solution to uh, equations with variable coherence. Uh, if you have this comparison, then you can use, uh, uh, you can estimate the, uh, the measure of the, the super level set. And after that, uh, they apply uh, a, a coring of ink uh, lama, which was originally due to uh, Safonov and uh, Kirov in 1980, uh, when they proved the, the famous uh, uh, Kirov Safonov estimate. Uh, they use uh, this lemma to estimate the, the level set of uh, uh, the ma maximum function for the, uh, the uh, gradient u squared. Okay, so this is the, the basically the, the idea of the, the proof. So you first estimate uh, this uh, uh, Lipschitz norm of uh, equations with constant coefficients, then you, you use a uh, comparison uh, to uh, to obtain the, the this uh, level set estimate. Any questions? Uh, I think no, you can continue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, there are many also uh, many subsequent work. Uh, for example, in 2005, uh, Bion and Wang, they obtained uh, W1P estimate for elliptic equations with uh, VMO coefficients. With the VMO coefficients uh, in uh, rough domains, so which is called the Riefenberg flat domains. So roughly speaking, Riefenberg flat domains uh, means that uh, locally you can trap the boundary between uh, two very close parallel uh, prime. Okay, so, so the picture looks like this. So this is our domain and you can trap this in a very thin disk. So this is uh, more general than, uh, 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 for example, C1 uh, domain or Lipschitz domain with a small Lipschitz constant. And uh, uh, in 2007, uh, Zhong Weishan studied uh, the ALP boundary value problem in Lipschitz domains by using this level set argument. So he considered non homogeneous boundary conditions. And uh, recently, uh, with, uh, uh, with Choi and my former student, uh, Zhong Yang Li, uh, into these two papers uh, in 2018 and 2021, uh, we studied. Uh, elliptic and uh, parabolic equations with uh, mixed uh, uh, homogeneous directly and uh, uh, co-normal boundary conditions. So we split the, the boundary of the domain into two parts. So say this is our domain. Uh, then we split the, the boundary of the domain into two parts. So in one part, we impose the directly boundary condition. And in the other part, we impose the, the numerical boundary condition. And then by using this level set argument, we can obtain optimal W1P estimate and the very weak conditions on the, on the, on the domain or the, and also the separations. And uh, later uh, with uh, Song Yuan, we also studied uh, the non homogeneous boundary uh, value problem. Okay, and uh, consider Laplace and the heat equations. So in, the, in this case, uh, we consider domains which is uh, uh, 
removal fright, and also Lipschitz. And uh, the separation is uh, close to uh, Lipschitz uh, functions. So they are also uh, very, very rough. Okay, so, so next I will uh, talk about uh, the Caputo uh, fractional derivative. So this is the, the first uh, uh, part of my, my talk, which is about uh, uh, equations with uh, uh, time fractional uh, derivatives. So this is the, the Caputo uh, fractional time derivative. So this is equal to some constant. So one over this gamma function times the, the time derivative of uh, this, uh, this uh, fractional integration. Okay, so this is integral from zero to t, t minus s to the power minus alpha times this difference. So we want to replace uh, in the probability equations the, the, the time derivative by this uh, fractional time derivative. So uh, this is meaningful. So this operator was introduced by uh, Caputo a long time ago in uh, 1967. And this operator has been used uh, uh, to model uh, fractional diffu uh, diffusion or anomalous uh, diffusion in plasma uh, turbulence. So when uh, u is equal to zero at time t uh, zero, then this operator can be rewritten into this form. So this partial t alpha u is equal to uh, this uh, fraction integration of uh, uh, order one minus alpha back down ut, or this can also be uh, written as a partial t back down this uh, fraction integration. So this is the fraction integration. So i one minus alpha u is equal to this constant times integral from zero to t of t minus s to power minus alpha u s ds. Okay, so this is kind of a uh, convolution of for uh, u with this kernel. But this is uh, backward, right? So you know, because s is less than t. Okay, so this fractional integration was introduced even now, even 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 before, and Caputo by uh, Hardy Little in 1928. I think uh, you can probably find earlier reference references about this. Uh, this operator, but anyway, you can find this uh, in, their, in their book by Hardy Little in uh, 1928. So uh, this is the case where alpha is between zero and one. And uh, we can also consider fractional uh, time derivative when alpha is bigger than one. So when alpha is bigger than one, this can be written in, in this form. Uh, when, so let's, for simplicity, let's assume that the ut is equal to uh, partial tu is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, when tt is equal to zero, uh, uh, we have these initial conditions. So why do we need two initial conditions? Because uh, we know that when alpha is equal to two, this corresponds to a wave equation. And for wave equations, we need two initial conditions. And when alpha is between one and two, this is somehow closer to wave equation than uh, Diffu uh, diffusion equations. So indeed we need two initial conditions for, for this case when alpha is between uh, one and two, okay? So in that case, uh, this uh, fractional time derivative can be written uh, in this form, as, uh, which is similar to the previous one, but uh, instead of uh, partial tu, we have this uh, partial t square u here. And again, uh, this, uh, partial t alpha u, this fractional time derivative can be uh, reformulated into this form, uh, two form. So this is equal to partial t, uh, t square of i two minus alpha u. This is also equal to partial t alpha minus one of u t. And uh, if you want, we can uh, define uh, fractional derivatives when alpha is bigger than alpha, uh, alpha is bigger than two. But in my talk, I will focus on the case when alpha is uh, less than two. All right, so this is the, the equation we want to study. So the first equation is uh, in, uh, in uh, non divergence form. Uh, we just replace uh, uh, partial t u with the partial t alpha u in the power equation, right? And uh, uh, the second equation is in, in, in divergence form. This is in divergence form. 
And when alpha is between them, uh, zero and one in this range, so this is uh, uh, called a fractional uh, probability equation or subdiffusive equation. And this equation uh, describes a particle uh, with the sticking and the trapping effects. And when alpha is uh, between one and two, this is uh, closer to a wave equation. So this is called a fractional wave equation. Or sometimes it is called a diffusion wave equation. Okay, so this equation describes uh, a wave uh, which pr uh, propagates in, in viscoelastic uh, media. And uh, uh, they also, uh, these equations are also related to uh, non Markovian diffusion process uh, with memory effect. So, why do we, uh, why this uh, memory effect? Because uh, we have this uh, fractional time derivative, which is kind of uh, uh, depends. So, the, this derivative depends on the, the value of u uh, before this time, right, from zero to t. So, so that's why. Uh, this equation describes uh, this process with the memory, memory effect. It's not a local uh, operator. So if you change the value of u, for example, uh, in t over two, right? Then this uh, this value of uh, fractional derivative also changes. Uh, so these equations uh, attracted uh, much attention in, in previous years. So let me mention uh, two uh, interesting results in this, uh, for this equation. So uh, in 2013, uh, uh, Zucker obtained a uh, dejoge Nash model type estimate for uh, divergence form equations. So he considered this uh, divergence form equation and obtained a uh, C alpha estimate uh, of, uh, of solutions. And in uh, 2016, uh, uh, Alan Kafrari and, uh, and Basal, uh, they obtained they also obtain the George Nash model estimate, but for equations with uh, 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 operators fractional in both TNX. Okay. So, uh, so in this case, they, they can also obtain uh, CR alpha estimate for, for solutions. So we are interested in the uh, we are more interested in the in the, in the sublet estimate. Uh, so uh, for the for the mixed norm AL, AL PQ estimate uh, uh, in nineteen. Uh, 92, uh, Primo and uh, Proust, they consider the case when AIJ is equal to uh, delta IJ. So it's uh, Laplace, right? Laplace operator. And the uh, alpha is uh, between uh, 0 and 1. And the P and Q is uh, uh, satisfied this, uh, this condition. So 2 over alpha times uh, Q plus D over P is less than 1. So let me remind you that alpha is the, the, the exponent in this uh, time derivative. Okay, so this, this is alpha. And uh, they also consider certain parabolic uh, Volterra equations. So their method is to use a semi-group and uh, method and also operator theoretical approach. And later, uh, Proust in 1912, uh, 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 sorry, 2012, uh, they, uh, he considered uh, general uh, Volterra equations in this form. So this is, uh, uh, U t x plus this integral uh, from zero to t of a t minus s. The uh, a is the, the uh, operator uh, in in x. Okay, is equal to f t x. So if you consider this uh, original this equation, you can rewrite uh, this equation into this form by uh, take the the integration in x. Then you get this equation. So this is actually more general uh, more general form. In this water uh, uh, equation form, and in two thousand five, uh, Zaka considered uh, this fractional uh, uh, probability equations uh, when a i j are uniformly continuous and p is equal to q, uh, and when alpha is uh, uh, so in, in this result alpha is. Uh, uh, in, in this in this range, so alpha is between zero and one, but the, uh, alpha cannot be equal to these uh, four numbers. So there's certain restriction in the range of alpha. Uh, and also in this uh, uh, 
uh, result, uh, there's a condition of uh, the coefficients at infinity. So, uh, so the limit as x goes to infinity of AIJ must exist. Okay, so there, there's a limit behavior of the, the, the coefficients at infinity. But he considered equations with uh, no homogeneous initial conditions or, or also with boundary conditions. All right, so uh, there are many other work, uh, for example, by uh, these two authors. They obtained L2 estimate for divergence from equations with uh, C1 coefficients. And also uh, there are some work by, uh, by these authors. All right, so, so the, the, the equation we want to uh, study uh, in our uh, work is uh, 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 this divergence form equation. Okay, so this is, uh, again, this is partial T alpha U plus uh, this uh, second order operator is equal, to, is equal to F. So we consider this equation from uh, zero to T times uh, times RD. And we impose uh, this initial condition U zero is uh, dot is equal to zero when alpha is less than one. And when alpha, sorry, this is, uh, this is a type. So alpha is between one and two, uh, we impose the uh, two initial conditions. So u0 is equal to zero and uh, ut0 is also equal to zero. So first uh, in 2017, uh, Kim Kim and Bing uh, studied uh, this equation uh, when alpha is uh, between zero and two. So in, in, in their uh, result, they assume that the leading coefficients are uniformly continuous in X and the piecewise continuous in T. And also they assume that this uh, limit as X goes to infinity of AIJ exists. So this is the, the same condition as in the, in the paper by Zerka, right? Then they obtain uh, this uh, ALQP estimate and also the solvability of, of, this equation, of this equation. So how did they obtain this, this result? So uh, their proof is based on uh, representation formula uh, for solutions to fractional time. Uh, operator, a uh, fractional heat uh, operator, uh, using using the uh, so-called uh, metag Laffler function. So this is the metag Laffler function. So this is the summation, and as n goes to uh, n goes uh, from zero to infinity of uh, this z to power n over this gamma function. So this uh, this function has been studied a lot in the in the literature, and then they, they also used the perturbation argument. Uh, to perturb from this uh, heat heat operator fractional heat operator to uh, this uh, uniform and continuous in X and the piecewise continuous in T uh, coefficients. Okay, so because they perturb from this heat operator, so they need to assume that, that the coefficients are piecewise continuous in, in T. So that's that's their uh, assumption on, on the coefficients. So with uh, with Kim in 2018, uh, we uh, uh, consider much more uh, general coefficients. But uh, in our first uh, paper, we consider the case when alpha is less than one. Okay, so uh, alpha is less than one. Uh, T is uh, uh, between zero and infinity, and P is uh, between one and infinity. So our condition on the coefficients is that uh, it is VMO in X and also measurable in T. So there's no regularity assumption on the coefficients with respect to the to the time variable. So this is the, the same class of coefficients considered by uh, Kirov in 2005 when he, uh, he studied uh, second order uh, power wave equations. And under this uh, these con conditions, we obtain the the LP estimate, uh, sobered phase, sobered, uh, sobered phase estimate, and also the solubility of equations. So our proof is based on uh, levels of algorithm without using any uh, uh, kernel estimate. So in the, in the proof of uh, Kim, Kim, and Lim, they used uh, the fractional heat uh, 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 kernel. Okay, so they used a certain kernel estimate to obtain the solutions. But in our proof, uh, we, we did use uh, uh, kernel estimates. So be because of that, uh, we, can, uh, we can treat measurable uh, coefficients. So the, the, the main difficulty in, in the proof is, to, uh, is that it is, uh, it, it is difficult to obtain air, in, air infinity estimate of the hash of the, the, uh, of the solution. 
to locally uh, homogeneous solution with constant with coefficients depending only on the on the time variable. So this is the because of foreign embedding. So if you consider, suppose we have a solution to homogeneous uh, equation with constant coefficients, uh, with uh, with coefficients depending only on time variable, then the solution is in this this space. Uh, in the time variable, it has uh, alpha derivative in the time variable, right? But uh, this space is embedded into L infinity only if alpha is bigger than one, one half. So from this embedding, you can easily see that when alpha is too small, uh, we cannot immediately, we cannot directly get the, the L infinity estimate. So to overcome uh, this, uh, this difficulty, uh, we use the following bootstrap argument. So we start from the, uh, the L2 estimate. So L2 estimate can be obtained uh, easily by using uh, uh, either Fourier transform or using uh, integration by parts. And then uh, we localize this L2 estimate and use the sobolev embedding uh, to prove that if you have a solution to homogeneous equation with, uh, uh, with coefficient dependent only on the time variable, uh, then uh, we can show that uh, the hashing of u is in LP1 for some p1 uh, slightly larger than two. Okay, so we can we cannot get L infinity, but we can get LP1. And and now uh, we modify uh, the level set argument and prove that uh, we and prove the LP estimate when p is between two and p1. And after that. Uh, we can localize the, the previous LP estimate and then use the embedding theorem again as in the first step to show that the d squared u is in LP2 uh, for some P2 bigger than P1 if the u, u, u is a solution to homogeneous uh, equation. Okay, then we can iterate. We can uh, iterate this procedure uh, to improve the, uh, improve to, to increase this P and uh, get the, the sovereignty for any p between two and infinity. Right, so that's the that's the, the main idea of our proof. And when p is less than two, we use the reality argument. Uh, so to also incorporate uh, VMO x coefficients, uh, we uh, we use uh, the perturbation argument in, in the level set, in the level set uh, method. So this is the, the proof of the our first result. Uh, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, the key idea of the, is you use the level set method, right? Yes, yes. We use the level set argument and then use this uh, bootstrap kind of bootstrap argument. Oh. Oh, iteratively oh. increase the uh, increase this uh, exponent p. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. All right, so so let me let me continue. Uh, so in uh, in the second paper, we obtain a weighted a weighted estimate with uh, Milken uh, AP weights. So let me first recall what is the the, the AP weight. So AP weight is a collection of uh, the negative weight uh, weight uh, weighted function. Uh, Omega, such that uh, this uh, uh, this product of these two averages on left hand side is finite. Okay, so you first take the average of uh, the omega in, in in this ball, and you take the average of omega to the power minus one over p minus one in a single, ball, and the raised to the power p minus one. If you take the the product of them and take the sup in x and r, if this quantity is uh, is finite, then we say that this uh, this is uh, AP AP weight. Omega is AP weight. So notice that by using Holder's inequality, this quantity is uh, always greater than or equal to one. Right? And the condition of uh, uh, AP condition is that this, if you take the soup, so it's finite. Uh, also by Holder's inequality, you can see that if you increase uh, in, increase P, if P is less than Q, then AP is a subset of, of AQ. And we, if you define this AP constant, then the AQ constant is less than or equal to AP constant. Wherever p is less than q, so uh, this class of weights is uh, very important because uh, uh, the maximum operator is uh, bounded 
in weighted LP space with, with AP weights. Okay, so that's why this is a very uh, useful class of, uh, of weights. And we can define by using this weight, we can define this uh, weight, uh, this mixed norm, weighted mixed norm uh, uh, space. So if I first take the, the weighted LP norm uh, in X, then you take the weighted LQ norm uh, in T with, uh, with omega two weight. Okay, so omega one is a function of X and omega two is a function of T. All right, so uh, with, uh, with AP weights, uh, first, uh, Han uh, came and the park in 2020, they obtained the following result. So alpha is uh, between two, uh, 0 and 2, and Aij is uh, equal to delta Ij, or constants. And the omega 1 is AP weight, and omega 2 is AQ weight. Okay, so P is not equal, uh, P is uh, PQ and B, uh, between 1, one and infinity. Then ob they, they obtained this uh, weighted uh, estimate, so AQ omega two and LP omega one estimate and also solubility of four of solutions. But a uh, restriction is that AIG should be uh, the delta IG or constants. So in their proof, uh, uh, their proof used uh, uh, is to uh, establish the mean oscillation estimate using the, the kernel estimate uh, in, in their previous paper, King Kim and Ling and Kim and Ling. And uh, uh, also used uh, 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 the mixed norm shaft function uh, theorem in my paper with, uh, with uh, the Duyuan King in 2018, which I mentioned before. So how about variable coordinates? Uh, okay, so, uh, so in fact, the above result can be extended to the case when uh, omega two is equal to uh, one and AIJ are uniformly continuous in X and piecewise continuous in T. But when P is not equal to Q, they, uh, they, they always require this, uh, this assumption that the limit as X goes to infinity of AIJ must, uh, must exist. So, so, so this coherence has a limit at, at infinity. All right, so uh, with, with Duyong, uh, we extend the above result uh, to the uh, equation with, uh, with VMO coherence, VMO X coherence. Uh, so let me remind you that this means that uh, this means that the coefficients are VMO in X and the measurable in T. But uh, alpha uh, needs to be between zero and one. Okay, so this is our restriction. The restriction in our results. Alpha should be less than one. So here's the, the theorem. Uh, alpha is between zero and one, and AIJ are VMO in X and measurable in T. And omega one is AP weight, and omega two is AQ weight. Uh, P is uh, P curve between one and infinity. They can be the same or different. Then we have this uh, weighted uh, mixed norm estimate and also so This is our theorem in 2020. Uh, so again, uh, our proof uh, does not any uh, does not use any uh, estimate of fundamental solution. Uh, solution. So this is a kernel-free uh, approach. However, uh, the iteration argument I mentioned above does not work in this case. So if you use that iteration argument, it's, it's not uh, possible to obtain this uh, weighted estimate uh, for any omega in uh, AP and omega two in AQ. So, uh, so we need we uh, so the idea is to apply the the mean mean oscillation method. So that's the first method I mentioned in today's talk. Uh, so for that we need to estimate how the uh, estimate of uh, d square v, where v is a solution to the homogeneous equation. But as I mentioned before, uh, it's not uh, it's, di it's difficult to obtain this directly by using embedding, right? Because when alpha is small, this embedding uh, is, is not embedded into L infinity. Either. So to overcome uh, this difficulty from the non-local effect. So our strategy is to consider uh, infinite cylinders instead of usual public cylinders. So we consider this infinite cylinder in the, in the time variable. So this is infinite, okay. So in the, uh, in the T direction, this is infinite. And apply the, uh, the Hardy uh, little word maximum function for strong maximum, uh, strong maximum uh, functions. And also to obtain uh, hold the estimate uh, for d square v 
we again use a bootstrap a bootstrap argument uh, uh, based on the the unmixed ALP. Okay, so let me just skip the the details. So these are two uh, uh, key lemmas in our proofs. So the first one is uh, for uh, solutions to uh, with uh, uh, two equations with uh, with uh, uh, zero right side and also coefficients uh, depending only on the time variable. Okay, so you can obtain these two uh, estimates for solutions to uh, homogeneous equations. So in particular, we can obtain this holder estimate. Right? And the second number is uh, uh, for non-homogeneous equations. So we can obtain the, this uh, uh, average, uh, this uh, average, LP average of uh, d squared u, uh, d squared w, by this uh, summation of uh, weighted summation of uh, LP average of f uh, in a sequence of uh, cylinders. Okay, so this is uh, due to the the uh, the non-local facts of the this operation. All right, so again, let me just uh, skip this this part. Uh, so later we studied. Uh, this uh, case when alpha is between one and two. So the question is, can we obtain ALP estimates for uh, equations with uh, VMO uh, or VMO X of, of uh, VMO X coefficients? So this case is actually quite different from the case when alpha is uh, less than one. Uh, for example, there's no maximum principle when alpha is bigger than one. And also even the, the L2 estimate is not immediate. Uh, for example, when alpha is uh, less than one, you can test the equation by, by u and show that uh, the, this integral involving the, this time derivative is actually in the net. But when alpha is bigger than one, this is, is not true. Okay, so uh, I think in general, this, is the, this integral is not the net. So this is actually in the same split as the maximum principle because the maximum principle does not hold in this case, does not hold in this case. So, uh, so this is no longer a work in progress. So we have already finished this paper. So with so with the end, so in 2021, uh, we consider a case when alpha is between one and two, and we obtain uh, this mixed norm estimate and also solubility when AIJ are uh, VMO in TNX. Okay, so uh, so our proof uh, follow the strategy of uh, uh, in my paper. With the Duyong by establishing mean oscillation estimate. But the proof is much more in, uh, involved because uh, when alpha is bigger than one, there are more terms from the fractional time derivative. So to estimate V, we apply the, the, uh, the unmixed ALP estimate due to King Ping. So to estimate W, uh, we solve an equation in a bounded uh, cylindrical domain and then uh, used uh, the method of eigenfunction expansions and also uh, some properties of uh, uh, Mittag uh, Lafka functions. So in the same paper, we also uh, consider divergence from equations as well as, well as equations in half space and also in, in domains with uh, certain boundary conditions. All right, so uh, I only have like uh, 10 minutes. Uh, for equations with the, the local derivative in X. So that's the second uh, topic of my, my talk. So this equation also, uh, th this operator also attract uh, much attention uh, in the last uh, 10 to 15 years. So let's consider this in the local elliptic operator uh, in non-divergence form. Okay, so, so LU is equal to this uh, integral uh, operator on U. So that's integral in RD of UX plus Y minus UX minus uh, Y dot gradient u times this uh, chi. Chi is equal to zero when sigma is uh, less than one. So, so sigma is the order of this operator. Uh, when sigma is less than one, chi is equal to zero. When sigma is equal to, bigger than one, chi is equal to one. And when, when sigma is equal to one, chi one is equal to indicator function of V1. And uh, uh, this k is the kernel uh, of this operator. So this operator appears naturally in, in many models in physics and many uh, which involves long-range uh, long interaction. So you know, uh, 
very special case is when kxy is equal to uh, some constant times y to the power minus d minus c. Okay, so sigma is the order of the operator d is the dimension of the space. So in that case, we obtain this fractional uh, Laplace operator. And you can take the, uh, if you take the free transform, you can also express this fractional derivative into this multiplier. So this, you just uh, take the free transform and multiply this by the casino power uh, sigma. And in a, a symmetry condition, uh, you can rewrite this LU into, into this uh, uh, integral of the second, uh, second order of final difference. Uh, so let's assume that a kxy is equal to this a times axy times y to the power minus d minus uh, sigma. Okay. When sigma is equal to one, we also impose this uh, consideration condition. So this condition uh, used uh, uh, also in the, in the previous literature. So uh, we consider two elliptic conditions. So the first one is the, the strong one. So uh, aij is found here from below and above. So this is the, the strong elliptic condition. And we can also consider a weaker elliptic condition. So that is uh, A is bounded. So this is bounded from above. And also A is bounded below by A tilde. A tilde is a function defined on the unit sphere. And A tilde satisfies this condition. So if you take the integral on the unit sphere of uh, omega dot Kc, Kc is uh, again a, a vector in the unit sphere to the power uh, sigma, then multiply by A tilde and take the integral, this is greater than equal to delta. So you can see that if the first condition is satisfied, so if this condition is satisfied, then the second condition is also true. Right? But uh, this is weaker. So second uh, condition is weaker. So why this condition is important? So uh, this condition, uh, with this condition, we can apply the result to a uh, linearized uh, Boltzmann operator. So you can prove that Boltzmann operator, linearized Boltzmann operator, satisfies uh, this, uh, this uh, weaker elliptic condition. All right. So uh, how much time do you have? Huh? Uh, you have five. Five minutes. Okay. So, okay. okay. So that's okay. Uh, that's good. So we are interested in uh, the LP estimate uh, in, in this form. So let's consider this equation, elliptic, uh, elliptic equation, LU minus lambda U is equal to F. Lambda is a positive constant. Okay. And we want to obtain this estimate, uh, this uh, H. Uh, this h sigma p norm of u is bounded by some constant times the LP norm of u. So this h norm is the Bessel potential uh, space norm. Okay. And in, in the special case when uh, AL is equal to the fractional uh, Laplace, this follows from the classical theory for pseudo differential. And in general, if the symbol of the operator is uh, smooth and its derivative satisfies appropriate decay at infinity, then we have the, the also have the LP solvability by in the classical fair, uh, Fourier multiplier. So. But uh, we need the smoothness in this case, right? And in a, in a general case, uh, when k x y is equal to k y, so this is the, the x uh, translation invariant case uh, that, that does not depend on x. Then we can write on the symbol of L. So this symbol of L is uh, this m c, which can be represented by this integral after take the, take taking the free term. Right? But in general, this operate, uh, this, uh, this symbol is not uh, sufficiently smooth to apply the classical multiplier theorem. So in fact, in, uh, uh, in 1992, uh, uh, Mikulovic and uh, Praga Raskas, uh, they consider this, uh, this operator, assuming that uh, A is homogeneous of uh, order uh, zero and sufficiently smooth then they can obtain uh, uh, this LP estimate. Uh, in that case, they can uh, analyze the, this uh, fundamental solution and apply the Majinkovich uh, theorem to obtain the LP estimate. And there's also a probabilistic proof uh, by these two authors in uh, 2007. Uh, they again assume that, the problems, uh, that this operator is uh, symmetric. And they, by using probabilistic method, they can obtain a very precise constant of the, the estimate. So about 10 years ago with, so with Duyong King, uh, we studied uh, the uh, very, very general uh, operators, uh, AXY is equal to AY, translation environment, but AY is just a measurable, okay? So measurable function with no symmetry condition. So it can be AY is not necessarily equal to A minus one. So 
in the same paper, we also prove the boundedness of the operator from this uh, 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 this special potential space to LP. So this is actually not a trivial uh, estimate. And later, uh, Xi Chen Zhang in 2013, he obtained the maximum LP Q estimate for the local public operators. And also uh, a bit later, Mikulovic's and Pavlovskas, they are uh, considered the local public uh, equations with uh, 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 more general a t, uh, 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 kernel, which is uh, a function of t, x, and y. But uh, uh, they assume that a is a c beta in x, where beta is bigger than uh, d over p. So when p is very small, uh, beta should be uh, very large in, in the SEO. So they use condition because uh, they, uh, their proof use certain embedding. So, uh, uh, then they, they need this condition p is bigger than the op so this uh this is actually only uh, used in the continuity of this operator from h sigma p to lp so as, as long if you can obtain the, the discontinuity then you can use perturbation argument from our result to obtain this lp estimate so a natural question is uh, uh is it is it possible to relax the, the this regularity condition on a for example uh, can we Assume that uh, A is uh, C beta or small beta instead of uh, this uh, large, large beta, or even Dini continuous or uniform continuous, right? Or even VM. So these are uh, these are very my in my opinion these, these are interesting uh, questions. So uh, last year with uh, with Duyun King and uh, his uh, PhD student Te Zhang, uh, we can consider the first case. So beta is small. So beta can be small. So we obtained the, the continuity of the operator L from this special potential space H sigma P to LP, provided that A is a C beta in X for any beta be bigger than beta. So if it is just a slightly holder, uh, uh, holder for a small beta, then we can show the discontinuity. So can, uh, consequently, with this condition, we have the, uh, the sobrief estimate and also, also solubility for the local elliptical and public equations with uh, with this, this type of, of, of operators. Okay. And in fact, in the, in the proof, we obtain a weighted estimate. So the proof is actually based on weighted estimate. So that's the key. So we need to in, uh, introduce weight and use ex extrapolation theorem to obtain this uh, continuity of this operator. So uh, uh, interesting open problem, which remains open, is to further, is to further re relax this condition on, the, on, on this A. And let me mention that for divergence form uh, operators, there are some recent, uh, very interesting work by uh, these four authors and uh, also uh, Nowak in uh, last year. Uh, in particular, in the paper by Nowak, he can obtain the, the ARP estimate when the, the, the coefficients are uh, kernel, when the coefficients are VMO. But uh, the divergence form uh, operator is uh, quite different from the divergence form. Uh, So this is my last slide. Uh, so, uh, which is about uh, equations with uh, uh, operators in local in uh, space and time. Okay. Uh, so this is a uh, joint work with uh, uh, Yan Se, uh, Yan Se Liu. So we consider uh, this equation, so partial T alpha U, so this is uh, on local in T and uh, minus L U, so this is the local in X, so it is equal to F, okay. So we assume that A is a C beta in X for, uh, for some beta bigger than zero. Then we show that this operator is continuous from, from this space to LP, okay? Moreover, uh, if uh, you have a solution to this equation, then we have this, uh, this estimate. So you can estimate the norm of U in this, in this space by using the LP norm of F in, in. Uh, so when alpha is equal to one, we also obtain a weighted mixed norm estimates. Okay, so, but uh, when alpha is not equal to one, it's not clear uh, if uh, you can obtain a weighted mixed norm estimates in this case. All right, so that's all I want to talk about today. So thank you very much for your attention.